whether you like it or you're scared of it. But you must agree with me that roller coasters are one of the most amazing inventions of engineers. But have you ever wondered what are the handles of these roller coasters made of? Or rather, what are the rail tracks of these roller coasters made of? They all are made up of steel. But where does this steel come from? It comes from the iron and steel industry. Yes, just like this, in our everyday life, we come across a lot of things that are all a product of some or the other industry. These are some of the important industries of the world. Let's name them. They are iron and steel, textile, where we will be learning about cotton textile industry in particular. Then we have the fishing industry. Following that, we have the sugar industry. Then we have the information technology industry. Then we have the shipbuilding industry. And lastly, we have the automobile industry. Today in this video, we'll be learning about the iron and steel industry alone. Right. The iron and steel industry is a basic industry or a feeder industry. Why so? Because the products of this industry is used as a raw material by other industries. Right? So, the iron and steel industry is the basic industry of feeder industry as it provides the basis for the operation of other industries. The products from this industry are used as raw materials, as I just mentioned, by other industries. Therefore, the presence of an iron and steel industry in a country is very important for the running of other industries. Another name for such industry is capital goods industry. The most important production of the iron and steel industry is the production of steel. Yes, steel is used by various other industries as a raw material. Therefore, it's an important raw material which comes from the basic industry like iron and steel industry. So why is steel so important? Because steel, in contrast to other lightweight materials, is less expensive and more ecological solution for automotive manufacturing. The reason why other industries like shipbuilding industry or heavy machinery industry or engineering industry that requires steel in large quantities prefer it because it is less expensive and it is an ecological solution. Therefore, it does not cause any harm to the environment as well as it costs you less as compared to other lightweight materials. So now that we have understood that iron and steel industry is a very important industry and we have also known that steel is one of the most important productions of iron and steel industry. So we must also understand that the making of steel requires certain basic raw materials. And what are these raw materials? Well, these are iron ore, manganese, limestone and coal. These are some of the most important basic raw materials that is required for the production of steel. Other than that, these raw materials are believed to be very bulky and huge, right? Therefore, the finished products made out of these raw materials are also heavy. So we can say that the iron and steel industry is a heavy industry. So if we take a look at the map of India, we see that these are the some important locations of the steel industries. And what are these? We have Durgapur in West Bengal. We have Bokaro and Jamshedpur in Jharkhand. Then we have Bhilai in Chhattisgarh. Then we have Salim in Tamil Nadu. Then we have Vishakapatnam in Andhra Pradesh. And then we have Roorkela in Odisha. So these are some of the most important locations of steel industries in India. Let's now take a look at the world map. So if we take a look at this, we can see the major producers of steel in the world. But in the very beginning, the concentration of steel industries was most in Britain.
which is right here. But after that, industrial revolution spread to other parts of the world and now these are the leading producers of steel in the world, in which China tops the list. Other than China, the other producers are USA, Mexico, Brazil, Germany, France, Italy, Turkey, Ukraine, Russia, India, Taiwan, Japan and South Korea. So you see that so many countries produce steel in such large quantities, making it even more clear that the iron and steel industry is a very important industry. Iron and steel industry requires a big capital investment, usually more than 10 crores, and it also requires a large amount of skilled as well as unskilled labor. Other than that, iron and steel industry gives a large scale production. So you see that a big capital investment of more than 10 crores along with a large working force that includes both skilled and unskilled labors makes it very clear that the iron and steel industry is a large scale industry. Other than that, capital investment is usually done by the shareholders, which includes individuals, banks, financial organizations, or even government agencies. Therefore, a lot of people or a group of people are involved in the making and working of such large-scale industries. So before moving on, could you help me fill in the blanks? Iron and steel industry requires dash capital investment. Does it require a small capital investment, zero capital investment, a big capital investment or a new capital investment? Yes, we just understood that iron and steel industry is a large scale industry and therefore it requires a big capital investment. So you know that iron and steel industry, as I mentioned earlier, is a feeder industry or it is a capital goods industry. Capital goods industry means it produces materials or it produces products like steel that is used as a raw material by other industries. Taking example of few of them are buildings and infrastructure. So industries that deal with buildings and infrastructure use steel more than any other industry. Therefore, it is almost holding a share of about 50% of the total use of steel as a raw material. Other than this, we have industries like mechanical equipment, so industries that deal with mechanical equipment like engineering industries also use steel. Other than that, we have automotive industry, metal products, shipping and rail transport, electrical equipments, and also domestic appliances. So you see that iron and steel industry plays an important role in so many phases of an economy. So what do you read here? we see that the development of iron and steel industry in a country leads to industrial diversification. So as we have been learning since the starting of this video that iron and steel industry is a basic industry that provides raw materials to other industries. So if we have a strong iron and steel industry, it only means that the development and growth of other industries is also going hand in hand. Therefore, there's a diversification of industries if the iron and steel industry is very, very strong. So as we just learned a while ago that steel is used as a raw material by different industries. Here are a few examples. We see that it is used in building and infrastructure. It is also used in shipbuilding industry and in railway industry and also in automobile industry. Here are a few other examples. We see that steel is used in residential construction. Other than that, in the very beginning, we saw the amazing roller coaster. Yes, the rail tracks of these roller coasters are also made by using these steel. In our households, we also have steel all around us. In our utensils, 
in our paper clutches, in our board pins and also safety pins and other nails. So you see that steel is all around us. That only says that iron and steel is a very vital part of our lives as well as our economy. So now that iron and steel industry is so important, the government of India has set up the Steel Authority of India Limited to promote the steel industry. So you see that this graph shows you a gradual growth in the production of steel over the years. This is a report of 2018 that says that from 2013 to 2018, that is within five years, there's a 6% rise in the production of steel in India. Though we have seen such varied benefits of the iron and steel industry, we must not do away with the fact that they also cause harm to the environment. And how is that? The iron and steel industry is believed to be the third largest contributor of air pollution in India. And other than that, it is also one of the largest contributors of carbon dioxide emission in the world. We all know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and it leads to the increase in temperature of the earth. So with the increase in the emission of the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, the global temperature will rise and it will also lead to global warming, which will negatively affect the health of the earth. So though this industry is very important, but things have to be kept in mind so that pollution could be kept at minimum. The iron and steel industry authorities, understanding the concern of environmental issues, are striving for constant modernization for older plants so that energy wastage could be reduced and pollution could be kept at minimum. So there are various mini plants that has been set up in iron and steel industry that helps in recycling the scrap iron. Iron that has been thrown off as waste or iron that has already been used. So these mini plants recycle these scrap iron or steel that has been thrown out or left over to convert it into new steel that could be used. Thus, it is also helping in preserving these non-renewable resources. So in this video, we learnt about the iron and steel industry. We understood how important this industry is. It is a large scale industry and also a basic industry that provides raw materials for other industries. We also understood that if the iron and steel industry is strong, then it can lead to industrial diversification, which will help in the overall growth of an economy. So in the next video, we'll be learning about the textile industry in which we'll be focusing on the cotton textile industry. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.